I'm Ellie. And I'm Martin. And today we've come to have a look at Corgarth Castle. Mm -hmm. As you can just see in the background, it's that lovely white building. It's lovely because it sets really against the, the background, doesn't it? It does, from the hills and the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it for miles. You can. Come with us and we'll explore it. Yeah, hope you enjoy. The distinctive white castle of Corgarth, with its unusual star-shaped perimeter wall, is an easily recognisable landmark set against the dramatic Aberdeenshire countryside on the edge of the Cairngorms National Park. Built in the middle of the 16th century as a home for the local Forbes family, it was a modest tower with a basement, main room, hall, private chambers and a garret. There was also a courtyard with other buildings including a stable, bakehouse and a brew house. In 1571, during the cause of the deposed Mary Queen of Scots, the Forbeses were allied with the supporters of her son, James VI. In the November, Adam Gordon of Ockindoon, near Huntley, came to Corgarth, intent on taking the castle for Queen Mary, but Margaret Forbes, wife of the Laird, refused them entry. So the Gordons savagely set fire to the castle, burning Margaret, her family and her servants to death. In 1645, the castle was occupied by the Marquis of Montrose, who campaigned on behalf of Charles I against the Jacobites. In around 1689, it was burned down again by Jacobite supporters, who supported the exiled James VII, denying its use as a garrison post for the forces of William of Orange. In the 1715 Jacobite Rising, the Earl of Mar marched from his ancestral castle of Kildrummy just a little further along the glen to Corgarve to recruit and arm his forces before marching on to Braemar to raise the standard of James VIII. In the spring of 1746, Bonnie Prince Charlie's army had returned to the Highlands. The Duke of Cumberland was advancing slowly up the east coast. The Jacobites established a magazine of powder, muskets and ammunition at Corgarth in preparation for their preconceived lengthy war in the mountains. 300 infantry and 100 cavalry commanded by Lord Ancram was launched from Aberdeen. Their progress through bitter weather and snowstorms was arduous and they arrived at Corgarth to find it abandoned by the Jacobite garrison. A letter from one of the officers describes the scene they found. It reads, After a most terrible march, we found it abandoned by the garrison, but so lately that the fire was burning, and no living creature in the house but a poor cat sitting by the fire. After the end of the Jacobite Risings at Culloden, the army started work to convert the medieval tower into soldiers' barracks. By 1750, a detachment of 45 non-commissioned officers from Fort George were billeted here. In 1802, the castle was returned to private ownership. 
A local man, James McCarty, rented it as a farmhouse in 1826. He even had a license permitting him to distill whiskey here. However, he was removed a year later when the army once more took possession of the castle in support of the excisemen who were bent on stamping out the production and smuggling of the Mountain Dew. James McCarty wasn't to be outdone. He became the garrison's main supplier of provisions, gaining himself a good penny or two. The garrison finally left in 1831 and the castle, although periodically occupied by farm labourers, fell into disrepair. It was given into state care in 1961. The rooms now represent how the old tower would have looked in 1748. Above the basement was the kitchen and main room, barrack rooms on the first and second floor and a further extra barrack room in the garret on the third floor. Ancillary accommodation was provided in two single-storey pavilion buildings in the cobbled courtyard. The west pavilion housed the bakehouse and the brew house, and the east pavilion housed the guard room and the prison. There was also a sunken system to provide fresh water. The complex was enclosed by a star-shaped wall with musket holes. The castle could easily defend itself against limited hostilities, but not against the sustained artillery attack. After all, it was originally built as a family home. interesting place for a little wander around. Hmm, setting some of the stunning scenery of the Cairngorms. It is, it is beautiful. Um, a little while ago we um, did a little video of um, something called the Watchers which is a little bit further up the hill um, and it's a, a group of four stones, I think four, half a dozen, something like that, yep. um, that you can go and sit in. They're designed to be seats and you can sit and you can overlook the castle. Um, so I'm going to link that video to the end of this one and um, please go and watch it because it follows on and it's brilliant although we did it Ooh, quite a long time ago <laughs> a little while yeah. ago yeah <laughs> there was snow on the ground there was snow yeah yeah so anyway really hope you've enjoyed this thanks ever so much for watching take yeah. care and we'll see you next time goodbye now bye
made that back to the car just in time. It's checking oh, it. Spoiled my hair. So Look, yeah, I know. Mm. Lunch. <laughs>